All right, my kindergartners, we are gonna do our wintry landscapes. The first thing you're going to need to grab is your white paper um, that I gave you at your table. You're also going to set your colored paper that you made with your squares at your table and you wanna make sure it's the wide way. If it's this way, this white paper will not fit on there right. So we wanna make sure that we have it up and down this way. Okay. So we're gonna take a little bit of Elmer's glue and we only remember wanna twist it so that glue is just at the very top. We don't want it to go up too far or too low, just a little bit at the very edge. You're gonna take this white paper and on one side we're gonna do about three lines in the middle. I'm gonna flip this over now and I wanna take the corners of this white paper and line it up with the corners at the bottom of my colored paper. So line them up and when they look lined up and the edge is touching that bottom edge of your paper, take your hands and gently rub. Now you wanna be kinda quick with this because the glue will dry fast on you. All right, so I have this glued down. Now I'm gonna glue my trees down. I'm gonna glue my first two trees. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of glue in the center, stay away from the edges, go in circles, and I'm now gonna glue this, flip it over on one side of my paper. So maybe I'll start with this side, and it doesn't matter how far up and down the paper you put it. Okay. Now, one thing I want to talk about, friends, sometimes when we trace our triangles and we cut them out, you might see a little bit of your pencil showing. Please add the glue to the pencil side. I always tell my friends, add the messy to the messy side. We want to add the glue to the side that has the pencil on it so that we don't see it when we flip it over. That pencil looks awfully messy. I don't want to see that. So I want to make sure I add the messy to the messy side. Again, a little glue in the center. And now I'm going to add this triangle anywhere on my paper. I can add it up high or I can add it down low in the snowbank. Maybe I want to put this one a little lower. What I'm doing by putting my triangles at different spots is creating space within my project. The lower down the page the triangle goes, the closer or farther does it look from us. Does it look like this triangle is closer or farther away? Good, it looks like it's closer. So what we're doing, my friends, is creating space. So one of your triangles place a little bit lower than the other to create space. I'm gonna do my third triangle now, and this one I'm gonna have overlap one of my other triangles. This will also create space. So I'm gonna add a little glue just in the very center to the messy side, and I'm going to just take this on either one. I only want a little bit of the corner of it to overlap the other one. And when I say overlap, that means it goes on top of another shape. So maybe just a little bit in the corner, I'll have it go on top of this one. Now, my friends, which triangle looks closer to us? Does this triangle look closer or this triangle? Good, this triangle looks closer because of two reasons. It's farther down the page, and it's also placed in front of this one by overlapping, putting this on top of the shape a little bit. Okay, so some of us might have done an extra shape. If you have a fourth, you can add that on. You can overlap it. Sometimes you can sneak it. It can even go above the snow a little bit if you want it to. So I have an extra one here that I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the messy side, flip it over, and I am going to now go maybe a little bit above the snow bank and we'll see how that looks. So now what we're gonna do is vertical lines down the center of our trees to make trunks. And vertical lines are lines that go up and down like this. So I am going to do one long vertical line right in the center of this triangle. Notice how I didn't stop right at the tip of that triangle, I came down a little bit. And I'm gonna go just a little bit below the actual triangle itself so it looks like a tree trunk. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Same thing here, and then same thing here. Okay, good job. 
Last step is horizontal lines. Now these are lines that go back and forth this way, okay? You can do straight lines or wavy lines for this step. I am going to use wavy lines in some of mine and straight line in some of my other trees so you can see the difference. So you're going to have your horizontal lines come outside of your vertical line. So I'm going to do one on this side, that's a straight line, and then a little one on this side. And I kind of go back and forth on each side, but all of them touch the middle of that first line. Notice how I didn't go too far out to the edge of my triangle. You only need to do little vertical lines. Okay, my pink one, I'm gonna do wiggly or curving lines so you can see the difference. And they all need to touch that center line. Good, now I'm gonna finish my last one. When your shapes overlap, you have to work around them. Alrighty, my friends, we are going to do some birds in the sky and birds just kind of look like the letter V. So we're gonna go in and do some V shapes in our sky. Great, so last step is some snowy paint. Now I only want my paint to touch one end of my Q-tip so that the other end stays clean. I don't want anyone to have messy hands because it takes away work from our work time when we have to wash them. So being very careful, I'm just dipping a little bit in the snow and I'm gonna do about three dots. Every time I do three dots, I wanna go back in and get more paint. So one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Notice how I'm working around the page because snow is going to fall all the way around us. Now it's important that you continue to get more paint as you're working so that your dots don't look see-through. Now I want to make sure I do some snow falling in front of my trees as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit on my trees. 